Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about retrieval augmented generation. So what's basically retrieval, retrieval augmented generation? So you might think, okay, the word augmented means to increase, right? Or to, in, to get increased. So basically retrieval increased generation. So you, well, that's one, of, one, one way of thinking about it from a linguistic point of view. And you're absolutely correct if you have that view. So it is retrieval augmented generation, retrieval increased generation. So what's basically this in terms of a from a technical point of view? OK, so what is a retrieval augmented generation from a technical point of view? So let's uh, first of all, let's look at the generation part of an LLM. So we have traditional LLMs, right? And these LLMs users can ask them questions. So LLMs um, this, uh, stands for large language models such as GPT, uh, Palma, uh, Llama, Llama 2 and all that. OK, so now we have a user and the user is asking uh, the LLM a question and the LLM is going to go ahead and give the user a response. So in my case, let me let me just use an example of the user is trying to find out the latest price of a Tesla Model X. So, uh, for example, maybe you're doing a school research project and you need to know the, the price of Tesla Model X. So you just, you just go to ChatGPT and you simply type what's the price of a, uh, of a Tesla Model X and GPT tells you the price of maybe let's say GPT-3 says maybe it is uh, $3,000 right and this information you just copy it and paste it in your research paper and that information is actually wrong why is it wrong the first thing is that GB, the gpt3 model was trained some years back so it doesn't have the up-to-date information right and secondly you don't have any source where you got that information from basically you're just trusting a model with your, uh, your, with your answer and the model is very confident in its answer because it actually just gave you the answer based on the information that it was trained on but this information that it was trained on was absolutely uh, probably updated by the time you're asking the model that question because uh, model x the price is always changing right so that's that's an issue so what one of the ways you can handle this is okay well you might say that what if we train the model all the time with the latest update information well that is okay but that is really difficult to do because training models takes a lot of time and it's actually very expensive to do so if you're constantly training a model then that's very going to take a lot of time and it's so time consuming so by the time you finish training the model and push it into production then the out the information is probably outdated right so good so that is a disadvantage of using uh, training the model with up-to-date information frequently as much as possible because by the time the model is out that information is probably outdated so another uh, solution you might say that okay let's connect the model to a database right so you might connect the model to a database and if the user ask the model uh, the prompt equation the the model prompts the model the LLM, the LLM goes ahead and retrieves the update to date information from the database, gets the relevant information, asks the re relevant information with the user prompt, and then basing on that is able to respond to the user with the latest up to date information. That will work perfectly and that will give the correct answer, right? But the issue here is this will work perfectly, but the issue here is I'm gonna look, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be going ahead and looking this, uh, at this from a technical point of view. So, if from a technical point of view, a large language models do not understand human data or natural languages like English, French, or whatever language your database is in, right? So now from a technical uh, from a technical point of view, this is not going to work. But just from a general point of view, you can get the gist of it, right? Now, from a technical point of view, since large language models do not understand human data, you might think of using a vector store. And what's a vector store? Is it a bunch, a collection of vectors that are basically embeddings of different information. Right. So instead of storing the word, the, the, the user information or the information in a database within a natural language, it's going to go ahead and, and embed these things, uh, the, the information, and then store the embeddings in a vector store or a vector database. OK, so now when the user asks the question, what's the price of a Tesla Model X? The model, the LM does not simply uh, respond with the answer that it was that it knows based on the time it was trained on. It's going to go into the database at uh, the vector store and find the latest price of a Tesla Model X. So using that relevant information, combined with the user prompt, the LM is gonna go ahead and basically be able to generate its response based on the latest information and the user prompt, and then finally provide the user with the latest information. So that is a good way to do it because LLMs basically understand vector stores or understand word embeddings, right? So that's basically looking at it from a technical point of view using a vector store. So that basically solves the problem, right? So if I ask the model a question, uh, it goes ahead and get the latest information, which is uh, in a form that you can understand. Use that information along with the user prompt to generate a, uh, to generate a response, which is a generation part of the 
uh, retrieval augmented generation right the generation part of it uh, basically also rag the, gener the, the generative part of the rag is now where the llm comes in and then the retrieval part is where the model the llm basically goes and search for the uh, up-to-date information from a vector store or from a data store in this case a vector store okay so that's basically how uh, retrieval augmented generation work or commonly also called rag so in this case, let me explain to you RAG from a programmer's point of view, okay? So for, from a technical point of view or how it works in the background. So basically, we have a bunch of documents. You can think of these documents as information, right? So instead of having to train the model all the time, you're not going to go ahead and you're not going to go ahead and do that. So we have a bunch of information, right? Which is I'm going, I'm going to refer to them as documents. So if you're working with things like LangChain, ChromaDB, they are also called they are called doc documents, right? So we have this bunch of document that contains latest information. So what you simply do is that we split this document into different chunks using library like Langchain, and then from there, we, after splitting the document into chunks, we are going to use uh, we're going to generate embeddings from this the splitted documents. So we're going to generate embeddings, and then using the embeddings, we're going to go ahead and store these embeddings in a vector store or a vector database such as Chroma, uh, Files, or Lens. Okay, you're going to go ahead and store this data inside of uh, a vector store. So whenever a user asks a question, the user question is going to go ahead and come in form of a natural language like English. So we're going to take that the user's inform the user's question. You're going to embed the user question, and then you're going to go ahead and search in our vector store. What is the vector distance between the user question and and and, uh, and the available vectors that we have inside of our vector store? So we're going to take the one that has the lowest distance, right? Basing on that information, uh, it means that we're going to take the vectors the vector that has is that has a closer relationship with what the user is asking for. So we're going to go and basically find the information that is more closely related with what the user asks. So if you're the user ask about uh, the price of a Tesla Model X, you're going to a vector store and look for vectors that have close information with basically what the, that has something like the Model X, price of Model X. We're going to go ahead and find, find, uh, find such a vector. Once you get such a vector, we're going to go ahead and return the document chunk, basically the embeddings of that document. And the LM is going to take that information and use its gen generative abilities to be able to answer the user question because we're going to take the, the document uh, that the user provided as a context, basically, sorry, the document that we got from the vector store as a context, plus the user question, plus a bunch of prompts that uh, that was passed to the LM at the, at the point of programming. We're going to take the user, uh, the use uh, document as a prompt, the user question, and the prompt the, the user the, the prompt that it was passed the model and then basing on that you're going to go ahead and generate an answer that is containing the latest information right so that's how basically how rag works on a surface level and uh you can see the architecture if you don't understand just pause the video just look at the architecture how uh basically uh a vector store works and how so not a vector store rather how rag works in the background using vector stores retrieval information generation be able to retrieve the information take the available information and be able to generate a response right so rag retrieval augmented generation retrieval increased generation so something they are very similar to that that's so that's all, all uh basically i can say about how rag basically work and that's basically how rag works on the surface level so how what are the advantage of using a rag implementation number one is that we get latest update information so if i have a model that was trained in 2019 even in 2025 or 2026 or somewhere down the future, I don't have to go out to actually train again this model. I can just go ahead and create a vector store with the latest information that the mod, the LM can retrieve uh, information from. So I can, I can create a retriever that retrieves information, pass back, pass it back to the LLM, and the LLM uses gener generative abilities to generate a response to the user based on the user question, the prompts, and the, the and the up to date information as a context, right? So you can also go ahead. Uh, one of the advantages of using a rag is you can go, you also go ahead and give the source of the information, right? And uh, in the upcoming videos, I plan on making a series on rag and how rag works using LangChain and ChromaDB. So guys, I have also written an article about it. I'm also right now just currently working on the article about how rag works and uh, basically how ChromaDB works, how a vector store works, and why we need a vector store. So I'm going to be po I'm going to also create videos on this in the upcoming time, and I'm going to go ahead and post the videos about this as well again if you are interested in this article and you want to read ahead you can actually check this uh, medium article that i posted the links will be in the description of the video so basically guys that's uh, all for this video thank you guys for watching so much again if you gain something useful from this please kindly consider subscribing 
liking this video and sharing this content with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Keep safe.